what if you want to grab two columns, not just one column, right? Um, from this original data frame, because we know that we have you know other columns in this data frame. So we can actually look at say year build, right? So that was another column. We can actually do it this way. So notice that you want to use two parentheses in here, right? So now you can actually see, okay, this is the estimated value and this is year build. So this is to really understand how you can slice, right? Taking a subset of the original data frame, right? So you can actually, you know, add more things like um, prior, sale, you know, amount, right? And that way you can get more columns. So, which is you know, very uh, very convenient. So notice that is two, right? The reason for that is you're actually passing a list of column headers into DF to get to this, right? So, you know, really practice on like how you can slice the data frame. And then you can always do dot head in here as well, right? What if you don't want to show everything? You just do it like, like this. So this will only give you the top two, um, you know, rows. And then, okay, let's go back. Let's go back to like our missing values, right? So now we have something like this, right? We know that we notice that there's like you know some outliers in here and here and here, right? Notice that the the unit is actually e to the power of seven, so it's a really big number, right? So we can. What if we want to, you know, just eliminate some of the outliers first? This is inspect. And the other is, you know, to eliminate, right? So um, we can say the rule of thumb typically is like, um, one is definitely visual inspection. You're like, okay, so these are the outliers, then I can get rid of them. Or you want to say whenever it's um, above, you know, 75th percentile uh, or below 25th percentile, right? You can actually have the hard cutoff to really get rid of these outliers. So it's a lot of time there's no, um, there's no one rule, you can uh, try out different things. But for, for now, let's just get rid of these, you know, these few, you know, maybe three, right? Three um, outliers. How do we do this, right? So we need to, again, slice our data frame. So again, this is our, we're looking at estimated value for each house. So what we can say, whenever this estimated value is greater than or greater than, um, 80, uh, 800, this is 800,000, uh, whatever it's say, um, so to the power of seven, right? So yeah, so whenever it's um, over 800,000, then we want to um, treat it as an outlier. Therefore, we only want to include the ones that are less than 800,000, right? So if we do this, so notice that you'll get this thing, right? Another data frame, right? So we can actually, again, use shape, right? To know how many are there. It's a lot less than what we had before. So df.shape is really, uh, what's this? So right now, because we dropped all the missing values, it's about, you know, 11,000. And now, you know, it came down to uh, 9,000. So we are actually getting rid of some of the roles because we want to get rid of the outliers. Um, so say this, um, is the way that we want to slice our data frame, right? So notice that the condition that you put in here, right? This is the condition which will tell you it's going to be a Boolean value. So you're going to get false, 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 true, 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 false, right? So for every role, you are going to get this Boolean value. And then when you pass this condition back into your original DF using the square parentheses, you're only going to be including the ones with false, uh, with, sorry, with true um, value, right? Uh, hold on a sec, I, okay, my bad. So I got rid of one of the zeros. So yeah, so this will become, you know, the, a new DF without the outliers with you know more than 800,000. We can actually change this up, you know, make it more strict. I bet this one is going to be um, very close to, yeah, 
So or we can just have a hard cutoff and say whenever it's over one million, right? So this is one million, then we don't want to include it. We'll treat it as an outlier. So this is how we can only grab the ones with less than um, one million value, right? So we can say call this another DF, right? We can assign this back to our DF. Now this new DF is doesn't have the outliers. Everything is over, you know, um, one less than one million. And then we can actually do this thing again, right? The, the box plot, and you can see that, yeah, it looks right, you know, it's you, you're not skewed. This box plot doesn't look so skewed like before, right? It doesn't, um, it's not so skewed due to all these outliers. It looks, you know, somewhat, you know, a better shape. Um, and then the thing you can look at is very convenient is the histogram. So what if we want to know the histogram of this, right? So df.estimate, that's how you can actually get to this field. Uh, very easy way is just dot hist, right? This is how you can plot a histogram. See how easy that is, right? So after getting rid of the outliers, you can see the sharp cutoff in here, right? Because we got rid of all of the houses that are, you know, worth more than one million. So you can see the hard cutoff here. And then, you know, the shape somewhat looks normal. I would say kind of normal. And then, you know, the, the, um, it's, the peak is around, uh, I will say 450,000 or 500, you know, um, thousand. So half a mil, which is, you know, uh, about right. So then, um, so this is really to, um, tell you how to fill out, filter out the noise and slice DF, right? So we've learned how to filter out the noise, such as getting rid of, um, you know, the outliers. That way that we do get rid of outliers is we can actually call this the field that we want to use and then put a condition, right? Less than say, you know, a number and then passing that back to our DF, right? This is how we can get rid of the noise and then this is how we can slice or take the subset of the df right if what if you have like two conditions right you have to put processes around it and then just connect it with you know like this so you're gonna have condition one you know condition two and then condition three right so um let's i mean we can try it so let's say df dot year build right so what if we want to only look at the year build that's after 2016, say, and then the third condition will be df dot mm, zip code. Uh, we don't have the zip code. Oh, actually, one more thing. So let's see if we I want to get to the unique value of zip code, right? So I can actually just call this field, which is a zip code df dot zip code, and you can see that you can get all these zip codes. And then what if I want to do unique? Right, it's very convenient. You'll get a unique, right, set of or list of zip codes. So there, because I wouldn't know what's there, right, and what to like use. So I can just say, okay, in here, zip code is equal to uh, two two, right? So something like that, right? So then this will give me. Uh, it doesn't look like it has it. So um, nine. Okay, it doesn't have this one. Um, okay, maybe the data set is old. Mm. Zero, and then two, zero, nine. Okay, so now we have something, right? So this is how you can have multiple conditions and use many conditions to slice your DF, right? So it's very convenient. You can see that it's all pretty much after, you know, it's built after 2013, uh, uh, year built, right? It's after 2013. And then zip code is all just um, one, right? Eight zero two zero nine, and then of course the SN value is less than one million, right? This is a way of like really slicing DF using multiple conditions. What if I have or, right? And then I can actually use the pipe, which is like telling me or. But now I have to use a, one more set of parentheses to say this or that, and zip code is equal to this, right? So. This is how you can build out the logic of different conditions.
And uh, let's move on to our next section, which is about statistics.